whatever it is whatever garment you are wearing right now just look at it just look at the seam just look at the end of whatever you are wearing right now so there you can see stitches right there will be stitches hmm you know how much is 1 inch right yes so the number of stitches in that 1 inch is what stitch per inch is so you just need to count the stitch per inch so number of stitches in 1 inch that is what stitch per inch is so if your garment is having this many stitches in 1 inch then the stitch is quite strong and good okay so that is what it is yes so that is what basically stitch per inch is stitch per inch is what the number of stitches in 1 inch okay so that is what stitch per inch is yes so now we will just move on to the next thing safety rules nothing sewing aids you know sewing aids we just briefly discussed in the last class we just briefly discussed about sewing aids right hmm? yes a uh, magnetic pin holder and pin cushions or something it is a wrist band or a stand on which we can just hold our pins so draping when it comes to garment making uh, we uh, there is pattern making methods different types of pattern making methods are there one is flat pattern method you will be learning this in the next year so one uh, two different types of pattern making methods are there one is a flat pattern method and the other one is a draping method so in draping method we will be using a body form a body form of different sizes are available in the market so according to the uh, size that we are going to prefer for our garment uh, we will have a body form and based on that body form we will be draping a piece of muslin fabric and then we will be creating a pattern okay so you don't have to know about all the details of dra draping and everything so in order to do this draping you need to pin those fabric onto the body form right so if you are wearing a sari sari is a draped outfit draped garment hmm you need to drape it over your body right yes the so sari is a draped garment so in order to keep all those pleats and pallu and everything on possession we used to pin it using a safety pin right we used to pin all those pleats uh, onto the underskirt using a safety pin and we used to pin those pallu onto our shoulder onto the blouse using a safety pin right so we are securing those pleats we are securing those drapes onto our body or something that we are wearing beneath it okay so we use safety pin to secure all these drapes so when it comes to draping we secure these drape using bowl pins you know what is bowl pin right so i will just show you images okay so the first one is a bowl pin okay this one this is a bowl pin so this is what a pin cushion it, it can look like this or it can roughly look like a bowl so this is a pin cushion tomato like pin cushion and the pins those pins are bowl pins okay so that is how a bowl pin looks like when it comes to the girls who wear a hijab and all they used to use this uh, bowl pins to secure their scarf or hijab whatever it is okay so they used to drape those long scarf around their head and they used to secure those ends and everything using these bowl pins so bowl pin is used uh, for draping when you are transferring a pattern onto a piece of uh, fabric also you can just attach pattern onto the fabric using these uh, bowl pins or push pins so push pins are those ones you used to um, pin pin a piece of notice onto a notice board and everything so that is push that is what push pin what is the second what is this that is choke okay that is called tailor's choke okay so tailor's choke 
So when it comes to pattern making, uh, another method is called flat pattern making. One is draping method. Another method is called flat pattern making. Well, we will take all the measurements. Hmm? If uh, Nimita wants to uh, make a garment uh, with Devi Krishna's size, then she will take measurements from her body, right? So if we don't have a model, then we will be taking measurements from a body form. Okay, we will take measurements from a body form. And using the measurements we got, we will be drafting. We will draft a pattern of whatever style we want. First, first we will draft a basic pattern, a basic bodies pattern. And using that basic bodies pattern, we will be developing different stylized patterns. Okay. So we will be developing this pattern on a piece of paper or a pattern making paper or on a chart paper. Okay. Once the final pattern is developed, then we will place this pattern on our fabric, on our main fabric and using this choke. So you are not supposed to use your marker pens or pens or whatever it is to trace the pattern onto your fabric because when you use a marker pen, when you use pen to trace, then it is very difficult. You, it, it is very difficult to remove those pen marks and marker marks from your fabric. But it is, uh, the case with uh, the tailoring choke is not like that. We can just dust it off. Okay, the marks. Okay, so it is just easy to use, easy to remove and everything. So using this trailer's chalk, just just like our crayons or those white chalks we used to use on those blackboards. Okay, just similar to that. So using this tailor chalks, we will trace the pattern onto our fabric. We will, we will place, uh, you know, let me. So if this is our fabric, okay, so this is our fabric. Uh, this is this is the pattern I want to trace onto this piece of fabric. Then I, I will keep this pattern on this particular piece of fabric. Then I will outline it using the tailor's choke. Just how we used to trace our hands onto a piece of fabric. So just like that, using a tailor's choke, we will trace the pattern onto a piece of fabric. So that is what? That is the use of tailor's choke. Okay. So that is the use of Taylor's stoke. Uh, and Taylor's stoke is available in a pencil form. Okay, just like our color pencil. So Taylor's stoke is available in pencil form and also in the form uh, on the choke form also it is available. Okay. And the next thing is no chur. So what is no chur? What is a no chur? So when you develop a pattern, hmm, what is the difference between a sloper and a pattern? What is the difference between a sloper and a pattern? Anyone? Pattern has a seam. Yes, pattern is having seam elements, right? Pattern is having seam elements, but a sloper doesn't have a seam elements, right? Yes, so pattern is with seam elements. So we know, uh, so one inch, a uh, half inch, one by four inch seam elements will be there according to different parts when it comes to really curved areas like armhole and everywhere. Armhole and all, the seam elements will be one by four inches. When it comes to neckline, it will be again one, uh, one by two inches. And when it comes to side seams, hem region, it will be one inch and two inch. So the seam lines, uh, the seam elements varies depending on each body part or each part of your garment. So uh, you will, uh, all this will be marked on your pattern. You will be tracing it onto your fabric. So you will be tracing your outline. That is the pattern with seam elements, right? So while stitching, how will you know this is how much seam elements or this is, I'm supposed to stitch through this part. I'm, I'm supposed to stitch through this area. How will you know? So what I'm drawing right now is a basic body. Okay, one side, left side, front basic bodies. Hmm? 
basic body front okay so now this is a sloper what i am having right now is a sloper now now it have same elements now it's a pattern right so this red line will be traced on to the piece of fabric right but i am supposed to stitch through this area this is the right size right so as a designer i will not be the one who is going to stitch the fabric if i am the one i will be knowing that i am supposed to stitch through this area i am supposed to leave this much inches in this area right yes hmm so other person will be stitching this particular garment so you are supposed to leave a mark so as your pattern is having seam elements you can't mark the inner lines right so you can use a notch notch to mark notch marks so on all these lines you will using a notch mark you will mark certain lines okay which will help you to understand the inner seam okay the original seam line so that is what notcher is used for so notcher will help you to help you to mark notch marks on your pattern so notcher a notcher is all is not always necessary to mark notch marks on your pattern you can just fold it and cut it using a scissor also okay so a notcher is not always necessary but this is what uh, notcher is used for okay you can also uh, mark notch marks on your patterns using a scissor also you can just cut it right you can just cut it like you just need to fold your pattern you just need to fold your pattern and if you tear it or if you like this you can mark notch marks right to show that you are supposed to stitch through this line this area hmm? so you can just use a scissor also but a notcher is used for marking notch marks on your fabric to show uh, to show this uh, you know the tailor that this is where you are supposed to stitch through this is the original seam line and the rest is seam elements okay so that is what notcher is and that is the use of notch mark uh, notcher yes so this you know right this one is a tape measuring tape you all know what it is right what is the use of a measuring tape Hmm? What is the use of a measuring tape? To get the correct measurement. Yes, you can take the measurements using a measure measuring tape, right? So, um, a scale that you normally use for measuring all those uh, things is not okay to take measurement from your body because your body is having a lot of curves and shapes, right? so in order to measure it accurately you need something that will fall according to your body drapes body shapes hmm? so a measuring tape will help you to measure all those curves all those body parts accurately okay so that is what a measuring tape is different type of measuring tape is available so the one we saw right now is a basic measuring tape okay this is what a basic measuring tape looks like hmm? this is what a basic measuring tape looks like yes so what is this one it's called an l scale it's called an l scale adra basma is uh, is hark nesli nasa nehal shaju please switch on your videos yes so what is an l scale any idea so l scale is used uh, for pattern development okay 
so when you develop patterns as l scale will be used and mostly l scale is used to measure crouch depth okay uh, i guess i showed one image last class right to show no i will just share it it's basically calculating our seat so this is what crouch depth is I don't know what happened. This is what crouch depth is. Okay. So sometimes if you sit on a chair, sometimes after wearing a jeans or a trouser, if you sit on a chair, the waistline just moves down, revealing your underwear or whatever it is right huh? so it is because the crouch depth is not perfect because the crouch depth of that particular garment is not perfect or maybe you are wearing a wrong size garment you are wearing a wrong size trouser or whatever it is huh? so sometimes the crouch depth is not calculated perfect and sometimes you are wearing a wrong size that's why the waistline moves downwards okay revealing your inner garment okay so it is very necessary uh, to calculate crouch depth correctly or accurately so you can't just ask your friends to stand still just to take measure crouch measurement right so you can just uh, measure the crouch depth you can just ask them to sit on a chair they can, after ch sitting on the chair you can just using a you know, uh, using a tape, you can just measure the crouch depth, right? You just need to calculate the length between uh, the waist and the chair both. Okay. So in that way, you can measure the crouch depth or in, uh, in another, or you can use uh, an L scale to measure crouch depth. Okay a crouch circumference, crouch, crouch depth. In order to measure crouch depth, you can just use an L scale. And L scale is also used uh, for developing skirt pattern or other pattern development process. L scale is used. Okay. So, yes. The next image that you can see over here is a body form. So we talked about body form, right? So body form is used uh, to check whether the garment is of right fit, whether it is having defects, whether the seam lines fall in the perfect place, whether the princess line is perfect, whether the dart is placed perfectly, whether the neckline is perfect, shoulder line is perfect, whether the garment is having a perfect fit and everything. Uh, we will use a dress form and we will also use dress form for draping purpose in order to create pattern using draping method. So that is what a dress form is. Hmm, what you saw right now is a dress form. So dress form is available in different sizes, US 8, US 6, US 12, like that different sizes are available. Okay, when it comes to UK size, it will be 41, 32, like that. Okay. So UK size and US size is really different because the body type is really different comparatively. Okay, so yes. So that is what uh, sewing aids are. And we will be using carbon paper. One minute. One thing I would like to show you is, I think I forgot to add that image. So this is a tracing wheel. Okay. So this is a tracing wheel. What is the use of a tracing wheel? As you saw, it has this uh, 
spikes on it. So you can use this tracing wheel to trace all those seam lines from your pattern onto your garment. Okay, so it will uh, leave small holes on your small marks on your fabric. If you run it through your uh, through your pattern, it will just leave a small small marks or holes on your fabric. In such a way, you will be able to identify your seam line. Okay. Another purpose of this tracing wheel is it, you can also help if you will be having a main pattern. Okay, so if suppose you don't want to spoil that uh, uh, main pattern of by tracing it onto uh, a number of fabric and everything, it, there are chances to get it damaged, right? So you, do, you just don't want to spoil your main fabric. So you uh, main pattern. So you decided to trace this particular pattern onto another piece of paper. Hmm? So you can just use your tracing after tracing the outer line, you can use this tracing wheel to trace all those dart marks, all those side seam lines onto your new pattern. Okay, so tracing wheel, just like the name says, it is used for tracing. Okay. So apart from that, you can see carbon paper in the list. So why is carbon paper used for tracing itself? Okay, you can uh, in between. Uh, so if this is your pattern and this is your main fabric, just keep a tracing paper in between. And you can just draw about, about it, right? If you just draw about the pattern, the marks will be transferred onto your fabric. In such a way also, you can just transfer all those inner seam lines and dot lines from your pattern to your fabric. So using choke, using a nocher, using a tracing wheel, using a carbon paper and all, you can just transfer the inner lines or inner seam lines. So you can just mark them, right? Yes. Then another thing is paper shears or paper scissors and uh, Fabric scissors, both are different, okay. So both are different. So I will just show you an image of paper scissors. So the one that you are seeing right now over here is a paper scissor. Okay, so this one is a paper scissor. Okay, just no, uh, notice all the structure, how the handle is and everything. Okay, so this is a, an example for paper scissor. Okay, and now I will uh, show you Fabric scissor. Okay. Fabric scissors. One minute. Yes. So the one that you can see here is a fabric scissor. Again, please observe the difference between the handle, okay? So what is the difference? What all difference did you notice? Yes, Nimitta. What all differences are there with a paper scissor and uh, a fabric scissor? What all differences are there? between these two. Uh, the handles are shaped different. Yes, the handle. Hmm. So if you observe it uh, clearly, you can see 
while stitching while cutting a fabric so the fabric will be you will not be holding the fabric right so it will be laid on a table so this side the down part of the scissor should be flat it should uh, stay close to the fabric or close to the table okay it should uh, if this if this is the table it should stay like this if this is the cutting part it should stay like this okay okay so i will show you the image again so just observe it so just see this part you look close this is like a straight line right this side of the scissor is like a straight line am i right hello yes ma'am one side is like a straight line only right when it comes to fabric scissor but when it comes to but when it comes to paper scissors look at the paper scissors okay see you could easily use because you will be holding the paper right you will be holding the paper so you don't have restrictions like that so it is not a straight line this not a straight line am i right so the structure of a uh, fabric scissor is different from paper scissor and you are not supposed to use your fabric scissors for cutting paper because it will reduce the sharpness you for fa fabric cutting you need extremely sharp scissors so you should keep it safe you should take care of it like it's your baby okay so that is what you are supposed to do because again fabric uh, scissors are expensive okay fabric uh, good quality fabric scissors are expensive and you should take care of it really well so that it will last long hmm? and you are not supposed to use it to cut uh, papers okay so just because you don't find it find your paper scissor for this right now you are not and your fabric scissor is just beside you you are not supposed to use it okay as i said you are supposed to take care of it as it is your baby okay so it is really precious the you sh uh, your fabric scissor should be really sharp okay otherwise well while cutting fabric it will damage your fabric while cutting when you are cutting while you are cutting using that uh, uh, scissor it will damage your fabric okay it will destroy the it will destroy the grain line and everything so it is always good to use a good sharp uh, fabric scissor okay so you are not supposed to use it for paper cutting so that so yes now i guess we are all thorough with the all the terminologies really all those sewing aids and the term the terminologies related to it right now you know what is a body formers now you know which all are the pattern making methods now you know what is a ball pinners what is a measuring papers what is a nocher how what it is used right you know what is a tailoring choke you all you know which all are the tracing methods and what all things you can use to transfer a particular pattern and seam lines onto your fabric right pretty simple yes the common machine problems i just want you guys to read it okay so when you come for the next class just read 
read it read and come okay so most probably we will be meeting after our on a vacation so when you come after on a vacation please read and come okay please read through this topic common machine problem it's kind of easy we just discussed it briefly in the last class so bobbin problems that winding issues and all hmm? so just read through it and you will be able to understand whatever it is okay so if you don't if you have any kind of doubts then we will just discuss it later okay yes so now hand stitches we are moving on to the next topic hand stitches so we watched a video on back stitch right so we will be watching it again hmm? so we will try to develop a uh, swatches of these basic stitches and seams and after hand stitches we will be learning about different types of seams okay you know what is a seam right you know you you just kind of have an idea about what is a seam right yes so we will just learn the basic seams basic hand stitches and everything so the first one is a back stitch okay so a back stitch is the strongest and it kind of gives you a machine looking like finishing if you use a, a back stitch is basically a hand stitch and it kind of gives you a beautiful finish so we will just watch a video